Hey there, Mecketeers. It's Jay. Uh, today I have three guests. Uh, it's kind of a group package deal. Uh, over here we have uh, John Stalker. Hi. We have uh, Susan Roman. Hello. And we have Linda Valentine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then it's kind of a group package because they've all worked on Sailor Moon, I believe. Uh, Susan, you've worked on pretty much all of the American dub, like from the beginning. Yes, that's right. And then you two were brought on in the Sailor Moon S, is that what it was? I was S and SS, and he was on at the beginning. Were you? No, I wasn't. I was the second, uh, there was uh, one, uh, the okay. first voice director. Actually, there was one person that voice directed six episodes, and then there was another one, and he did 65, and I did 90 odd episodes. So you won. I <laughs> am clearly the winner. <laughs> awesome. Um, uh, yeah, I guess we're going to talk about Sailor Moon just because it's kind of a hot topic right now. There's uh, rumors of uh, a new show getting uh, put together. Uh, so if we can just go down memory lane for a little bit. Uh, Sailor Moon was kind of, what, it came out like 90, I, I don't remember, I was like really young. I was like 94, 93? 21 years ago. Oh, goodness, 92. So, um, <laughs> uh, it kind of came out in a weird way. I think Novano kind of they cut and pasted some stuff, changed stuff up, they had like the Sailor Moon says stuff at the end, and you get to Sailor Moon S and I think Cartoon Network kind of took over and they were pushing for that one. Was there kind of a, were there any changes that you guys had to make in, in, in getting Sailor Moon to the American audiences as far as censoring, any creative differences you had to make due to American pressure? Yes, um, and I should clarify something, now that was not, to the best of my knowledge, not the producers, Oh, okay. uh, I believe it was originally Deke, was it not? Did it not come through as a Deke or simply as Toei uh, at the beginning? Uh, yes, there were a number of censorship issues. Certainly, uh, Japanese and American mores are very, very different. Uh, you can't have 12-year-old uh, uh, girls uh, bathing with 80-year-old uh, men. Uh, I mean, Crazy and, as that sounds. Yeah, well, we are so so prudish, but uh, says the almost eight year old. Yeah, hey, oh. uh, and, and certainly that wouldn't be even acceptable today. Things haven't changed. Uh, there are a number of, of moral issues, certainly in terms of uh, scouts being lesbian or uh, you know the, the whole cross gender issue would be acceptable today, uh, certainly back then it was by no means. There was maybe a, a burgeoning movement to for recognition, but uh, people weren't really coming out of the closet even then. So, you know, it, uh, yes, there was an issue. Um, was it, uh, I know, was it kind of hard to tackle that show then, dealing with some of, uh, I guess, what some of the pressures were? I mean, you, Susan, you were there from the very beginning, uh, and you worked with, I guess, all of those companies. Uh, were you a company where there different, you know, goals they had in mind in, in pertaining to like how they got the dub done? I, I, different companies, uh, production houses, etc., had really had nothing to do with the actors. Uh, we went in. We had uh, we were given scripts sometimes, and um, uh, we uh, were dubbing. So of course, uh, using the rhythm band, all the um, the dialogue was up on the screen, and then we left. So we oh. did our jobs and we left. Um, I, I, um, for some reason, Optimum Productions is coming. Yes, it was, was Optimum was, was the beginning. hired by, uh, I guess it was Toby. Toby, for any, right. whoever. So there was a chain of command about which all of us knew absolutely nothing, which is, just, you know, par for the course when you're an actor. Mm -hmm. um, it's just great. I'll just go in and do the work, and, 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 and hopefully it'll, be, it'll work out. And, and I'll get paid. I, and I get paid. That would be nice. And oddly enough, it did work out really, really well. And it's something that we weren't uh, expecting. And when we found out how successful it was, uh, it was absolutely a marvelous, you know, jubilant moment. Um, well, then this kind of leads to the next one. Then, uh, because Sailor Moon's been tw it's 21 years now, and it's it's still kind of looked at as one of those icons of anime. Uh, over the years, I mean, what has the fan reaction been? You know, from I don't know how many conventions you guys go to, but I mean, what have you kind of dealt with over these 21 years? Let me know answer. Uh, when did you we've, start only, we've only started as a unit. We started uh, only a number of months ago. We have a lot of them 
uh, already on the books because the demand since we got together has been really quite overwhelming. Um, but what we sense is that the community, the sales of the Sailor Moon community, has been waiting for yes. this to happen because it's been, I mean, I can't believe the lineup, but we signed for an hour and a half last night. We went a half hour over and it was a non-stop parade. Today we went about an hour and 10, something like that. And we left a lineup down the, so, I mean, it's just been. So there's, there's a, uh, definitely, and also, I mean, I remember I did go to some conventions uh, quite, a, quite a while ago, so maybe 15 years ago. Um, and just to show you how old those convention, that convention was, it was in Toronto, the Toronto Convention Center. We were signing autographs, and there was a person in line, one person dressed as Sailor Jupiter. In fact, it was, there was one person in the whole convention hall dressed in costume. And everybody looked at that person as if, you know, she had just flown in from Mars. Can you believe it? She's wearing a costume. Oh my God. You know, it was that sort of thing. Because it wasn't done. Yeah. And two years later, a year later, I don't know where it started, all of a sudden, everybody's wearing a costume. So it was really neat to see the, the evolution of the idea that you're, you're at a, a, a con not just because you want to buy some comic books, because that's in those days, that's what it was. I'm going to go and I'm going to buy some really great comic books and maybe I'll see a few actors or whatever, because yeah. people didn't really um, follow the actors who were, were doing the voice work behind the scenes, but now people are. So this whole other world has opened up. And I, I and, and look at the costumes here, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it, you never would have thought of that, you know, a little while ago, and look at what it's turned into, so it's great. It, yeah, it's gone kind of from a modest following to cult status, there's no question. And we did one last weekend in Toronto, mm -hmm. and it was literally just signing autographs the entire time, and we didn't eat all weekend. We didn't eat. We stood 12 hours a day, signing, all signing. day, didn't eat. Signing. Because you just couldn't walk away, but, oh, I can't walk away from you, you're yeah. lovely, you know. And this isn't in our hometown, so we think, oh, well, it's, you know, it's Toronto, it's just, it's just people being loyal because, you know, we're all from, we're all from the same part of town or whatever. But it's not. We, what we hear over and over and over again, this is what we hear. You were part of my childhood. Or you are my childhood. You are my childhood. <laughs> or you were my childhood. And, so, and you realize, wow, well, all we were doing was our job. Our job. That's it. And loving it. Of course, you always love to work. And, but never having any idea that this would occur. And it's now second generation, of course. Oh, sure. Yeah. A lot of moms the, are coming in. Right, the 10-year-olds that we were watching it are now in their 30s with eight-year-old daughters who are watching it with them. All on, you know, on DVD. Yeah. yeah, so it's great. Well, then, I cross that one out. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, you guys have all been working in the, the industry for a while. I mean, I guess Sailor Moon it appeared to be just another job at first, and then, I guess, 20 years down the road, it just kind of blew up. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't just another job for me because I was the third Sailor Moon. So they, it already had a following, and it was uh, a, a scary experience <laughs> becoming the you know the third Sailor Moon and trying to live up to that those expectations. Although I had no idea of the enormity of it, really. Yeah. Um, I'll just go ahead and uh, there's the there's the elephant in the room. Okay. Uh, He's very subtle. Uh, okay. Uh, just. If they if they make the Sailor Moon project, it comes out. Would you guys jump on? I mean, would you guys be ready to get right back into it? Oh, and we have a one, two, three. Yes. yes. <laughs> Unrehearsed. <laughs> I know. So spontaneous. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it, you guys. Uh, I know it's been kind of hectic, but hey, at least you got a game lined up for I guess I hope the next couple of years if Sailor Moon demands up, you know, for you guys. Well, we just have to make sure we stymie the new production somehow. <laughs> well, uh, thanks again, and uh, you know, it'd be great to see you guys later on in the future. Wait, be what's great? your screwball question? Uh, who would win in a fight, a caveman or an astronaut? Caveman. Caveman. Astronauts. Astronauts are fighters. They're smart. They're intelligent. Yeah, people. they're wearing all that stuff. To, by the time they got around, they hit. They'd be hit. Oh, oh. Hey, man, just take his club and no. Hey, man, they, they were raised on violence. Right. Okay. What's the answer? Uh, there is no answer, but I appreciate your thoughts. Okay. I think astronaut, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thanks again, you guys, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the con. Thank hey, you. Thank you.